another Christmas day, a time that brings joy to Christians all over the world. It is a day where the Christian community celebrates and commemorates the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. The event is usually characterized with colorful decorations, carols, shopping spree and Christmas jingles are indeed important features that usher in this day that brings joy to the world. Over the years, Christmas has become like a secular event characterized by activities other than spiritual edification, social gatherings, ceremonies, fundraising and parties as well as reunions are usually high during Christmas. On this episode of Frontline, which is a special edition as it falls on Christmas Day, we will be looking at um, the religious and social events that are synonymous with Christmas. And with me in the studio is Reverend Father Dr. Charles Omogate, the parish priest of St. Albert's Catholic Church in Benin City. Father, you're welcome to Frontline. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And so, what is the origin and significance of um, Christmas? Well, the origins of Christmas um, began with, um, scripturally, let me begin from scripture, there are no particular dates for the celebration of Christmas. Um, but we know Christ was born in a particular period in time, and the season where he was born was winter because it was cold, from the narrative we have in Matthew, Gospel, and Luke, and also in Mark. And so that places the birth of Christ within the context of the winter period. Um, but the particular date is unknown. Um, after then, um, when Christ died and the faith spread to various parts of the world, and the Roman Empire at that time was quite famous, you know. So the Romans had a particular feast, it was a pagan feast, and it was called um, De Solis Invicti Nacti, that is, the, the day of the birth of the unconquerable son. And so the Romans celebrated on that very day, which was um, um, December 25th, to commemorate the sun, because after winter and then the sun begins to come again towards summer. So for them it was a moment to celebrate the sun. So sometimes they call it the sun god, you know, to pay homage to him and all that. And you know, at that point in time, the first, second, third and fourth century, there was this conflict between the pagans and the Christians. So Christianity was still very, very young. Eh? And then after that period of lots of persecutions and all that, so by the time Christianity started to regain their feet again at that point in time, um, they now found it necessary to have the Christian celebration to replace the pagan celebration. Mm -hmm. So you could call it a, re a Christianization of what was already existing among the pagans. And it also aligned with the winter solstice, which was on December 25th. So the date was placed for December 25th. But as I said, it's not specific in scripture, but from what scripture tells us about the context of the birth of Jesus, we know that it was within that period in time in December. And so what's the significance? Why do Christians celebrate? Now, so Christians Christmas? celebrate Christmas because they want to reenact that incarnation story. By this I mean Jesus Christ, Son of God in heaven, came down to earth in order to redeem humankind. And it was a very important, remarkable moment in order to save mankind. So that very point where Jesus came into earth as man to take flesh, is, it changes everything about history entirely, it even changed the date from BC to AD. So the coming of Christ therefore is significant because it brings salvation to humanity. And so after some time, um, not only the Roman Empire, but in very many places around Europe, um, the nativity was now celebrated. The nativity that is the birth of Christ. Although they call it um, different names, the English people call it um, Christmas, Christmas. Um, the Spanish call it Navidad, uh, nativity. The Italian call it Natale, um, Noel in French, and the Germans will say Weihnachten, that is hallowed, um, hallowed night, holy night. But it all points to the same thing, the birth of Christ. So we celebrate the birth of Christ because that's a changing point, a turning point rather, in, 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 our, in our lives, whether as Christians or humanity in general. And so you, are, you keep all through the um, narrative to explain the significance and um, mm -hmm. the origin. 
we keep hearing Christian, Christian, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be a, a Christian religion. So, do all Christians celebrate Christmas? No. You know, as Christians, there are several denominations. Eh? But to answer your question very quickly, not all Christians celebrate Christmas. Some denominations do not celebrate Christmas. I would not want to mention the names of yes. those denominations. Some you know already, but they do it for some reasons. For some, because it's not biblical, like the date is not particular in the Bible. And for them, it's only Bible. But for us, we know that uh, the Bible emerged from tradition. And the Bible does not contain everything about Christ. So we, eh, as Catholics, we have both Bible and tradition to, as our sources of information. Eh? So those ones who don't believe in what is not in the Bible, eh, because it's so large scripture, it's only scripture, then those ones might not, um, they, they are not likely to celebrate Christmas. That's one. And two, because of the contentious uh, um, background to Christmas, contentious by by way of being a pagan feast mm -hmm. and then being um, transposed into a Christian feast. So they don't celebrate. That's what they say, you know. So it's not in the scripture and it's contentious because of the pagan background. But for us, um, it's it's a commemoration of the birth of Christ. Eh? And mind you, some denominations don't even celebrate birthdays. Either of a member of the church or a leader of the church, for them birthdays are not important in that way. So you wouldn't expect them to celebrate the, the birth of Christ. And so, among the various activities, you know, that characterize Christmas now, which aspects are more important? Because some people tend to think, you know, this period is time to buy Christmas clothes, mm. Christmas chicken. Some people are having mm -hmm. BP because of the escalating prices of um, those food items yeah. used to celebrate Christmas. And so, which are really the important aspect of this Christmas celebration? Thank you for this question. So to answer this question, we have to go back to the purpose of Christmas. So why is Christmas celebrated at all? What is the significance of Christmas? Now, Christmas is celebrated because it's a moment where Christ came into the world to redeem us. So first of all, it's an opportunity to reassess, reevaluate our relationship with God. The purpose for which He came. Are we, are we in tune with that purpose? Are we following His precepts? Are we doing what He wants us to do? So that spiritual preparation is the first, right? Preparing our hearts to receive Him, uh, doing away with sin, uh, practicing virtues, Christian virtues, good virtues, uh, trying to do away with vices. So that's the spiritual part. And then after the spiritual part comes, let's say, the social part. Now, because it's the birth of Christ, let us be happy, let us celebrate, let us rejoice. And how do we rejoice? Okay, let's buy some um, extra food stuff, let's have some drinks, eh? but in moderation. And then as that goes on, you also think, okay, I have something to buy, eh? I'm better off than this next guy. Can I assist? Can I support him? Can I provide some of his needs? Maybe not all. Okay, I bought some rice. Can you have some? You know, so there is also the aspect of giving during Christmas to share the love because that's why Christ came to give us love. So, because we are children of God, we are invited to also give love to others during Christmas. Okay, and um, so uh, let's you touch a little bit on it. So, how are Christians actually supposed to, you know, celebrate Christmas? So, how are Christians celebrate Christmas? First of all, go to church on Christmas Day. Today is Christmas Day, so you should have either been in church already or maybe you go later today so mm -hmm. that's the first thing eh? mm -hmm. secondly to practice christian virtues eh, i'm going back now to the purpose for which he came yes he came to redeem mankind he came to show us the way to the father right so we need to practice what he taught and what he taught is found in scripture and in doctrines and teachings of the church and back again to what I said, to do good to people, to assist the needy. That, that's very important Charity. for Christmas. Charity, exactly. To show that generosity. Christ has given us love. He invites us to give back that love to Him and to us. And so Christmas is supposed to be a, you know, it's a major, not supposed to be, it's a major celebration in Christendom. And when we're growing up, prior to this time, you could feel it. There's something we say, I'm feeling Christmas. Mm. And so why do you think this year the enthusiasm is so low, Father? Well, if you ask me, I wouldn't say it's just this year. Because for, for some time now, it seems every year it's dropping. 
that's for maybe for adults maybe for children the story is different i don't know i can't think like a child but i know uh, my childhood particularly in benin um, were memories that i will always treasure uh, basically centered around the spirit of christmas you know lots of shopping clothes are already available you know food and drink there's christmas in the air as we say it but then again because now so you, so you need to draw the connection between the active celebration of christmas and the financial or economic situation that we find ourselves it's not the same anymore the prices of commodities have skyrocketed uh, between last year and this year some items have almost doubled you know so it's difficult for families it's difficult for families economically and if they don't have money what do they do so that it's a shame because it's, it's a period that that should bring out the best in us uh, but I, I passed through New Benin yesterday and Ring Road also and it was like every other day and this is just uh, um, this was a day or two before Christmas let's say so it's not the same anymore okay? so that, there's that connection between our economic situation and the active celebration of Christmas but whatever be the case uh, the, the Christmas should be should come from the hearts right so whether we have enough or we don't have just be happy rejoice Christ has come to save you, to save all of humanity, and on a day like this, whatever you have to celebrate it, do it because with Christ there is hope for tomorrow. Okay, and so how can people make the best, you know, out of it this season? How can people, you know, celebrate with this um, situation? Well, I, to continue from what I just said, just manage what you have. Um, contentment so that's also one of the virtues that Christ speaks about yes, to be content contentment. With, okay. uh, so contentment don't look at the next person he has a car he's bought a house uh, his children are going God has blessed you with what you have and tomorrow by the grace of God will be better so uh, focus on yourself it's not an avenue or an excuse to say because I want to celebrate Christmas, therefore I have to go extra length and become desperate. You don't have to. After all, it's just for today, Christmas Day. Tomorrow is another day, life continues. So, whatever you have, just make do with it. And January is coming. Exactly. New Year also brings some pressure, also, you know. <laughs> so, just take it easy and, you know, be happy today for Christ is born again in our lives. And so, it seems like we've just been discussing that a lot of people celebrate Christmas wrongly. Um, apart from um, managing resources, knowing that January or tomorrow is another day, what advice do you have for people who celebrate Christmas wrongly? For instance, um, this use of um, um, what's it called now? The use of um, knockout, like okay, they call uh -huh. it, um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know, people eating excessively, falling sick mm -hmm. and even falling in the gutter drunk. Mm -hmm. And so what advice do you have, all in the name of celebrating mm -hmm. Christmas, you know, what advice do you have for them? It reminds me of my childhood. We used to save lots of money to buy Vanguard <laughs> and yeah, yeah. <laughs> And the fun of just hearing the blast is yes. enough for us. Uh, some buy, is it Bisco? The yes, one that, that one that shines. Yeah, that one is less dangerous. Yes, yes. Well, I will say abstain from knockout because it's dangerous. Eh? Mm. You might enjoy the sound. I did enjoy the sound when I was younger. <laughs> but now, whenever it's blown, I feel yeah. agitated because mm. I know it's dangerous. So that money you are saving to buy a knockout. Eh? Okay, Christmas is already today. So for next year, eh, for New Year Day, please use it for something different. Eh? And secondly, people, as you, say, as you said um, a few uh, moments ago, people have don't have the right disposition towards Christmas. By this I mean they think it's a time to eat, uh, get drunk. That defeats the entire purpose of Christmas. Eat moderately and drink moderately and you'll be fine. And so considering that there are many non-religious events during the season, how can one balance both religious and social aspects of the celebration? So both are important. Eh? The religious aspect and the social aspect and to to, to get a, a very good balance first of all is to go to church in the morning right to go to church in the morning somehow videos like the day before and all that 
so when you back from church and then you can came to the social part okay? some people say oh I have to cook and because I was cooking I couldn't go to church I was expecting I'm expecting 10 persons at home how can I cope but the persons are expecting perhaps they've gone to church themselves and they are losing out so how do you do it? go to church in the morning and when you return you can continue the social aspects and at night you pray for the sleep Okay, and so, um, Father, let's um, look at this area again of um, of charity. Some people actually allow, you know, they rather, they forget that, especially with the economic situation, don't you think this is the best time for Christians to be charitable, even if to um, non What I'm trying to ask is, should you be charitable only to you? Because this person is a Christian, is that, those are the only people you can give during Christmas? No, no. no. Christ came for all humanity, all of humanity, male and female, white and black, Muslims, Christians. So our religion is a religion of love and the love is not constrained to a particular denomination or religious affiliation. It's for everyone. So show love to people. That's why Christ speaks of showing love even to strangers, right? So whether they are Christians or they are not Christians, in fact, the more reason why you should show love to them because these ones you need to tell them about Christ. Your your deeds need to speak eh, in volumes about what you believe in, and it could also be a a channel for for conversion of souls. So show love to everyone, regardless of the religion. Okay. So after uh, in a few hours. Um, from now, Christmas will be over. We'll be going into the next day, which is um, Boxing Day. Is this part of um, Christianity? Does it have any religious connotation? There's an interesting part to Boxing Day. You know, when I was younger, I used to think somehow on TV, I don't know if it's NCH or channel or it's other ch uh, stations, they will have boxers. Eh? <laughs> That's when they show wrestling, boxing. So I used to think boxing they meant, okay, so let's come and box. Yes. You know, but that's the way a child would think. But boxing day is originally from Great Britain. And the idea is that people receive gifts on Christmas day or some even before Christmas. Particularly those who are not uh, financially endowed, not well to do. So when they receive those gifts on Christmas day or prior to Christmas, the next day, which is now December 26th, is the day they open the boxes okay. to see the gifts they have received. Okay. So, but later on, it took a different connotation. So, for some, it became like bank holiday uh, in England and public holidays in, in many other places. But originally, it's a time to open the gifts that you received um, on Christmas Day and, and before. So, is it religious? Well... Giving is religious in the sense that Christmas is about sharing, about giving gifts. Eh? So, partly it, it has religious connotation, but it's not it's not a totally typically religious uh, activity. As I said, it began in Great Britain eh, because they had to open the boxes. So, um, you won't find it in scripture. You won't find it. You won't find the Pope talking about it, for example. Okay. But it's one of those traditions that emerged during the season of Christmas. And it's today. nice because it has to do with giving. Exactly. Okay, so finally, finally, Father, your Christmas message to Edo people as they celebrate Christmas today. So it's important that today is Christmas. It's a day we've all looked forward to and it's a day we look forward to every year, not just kids but even adults because it's a day that Christ is born into the world again. And we must remember that Christ is born into the world in order to redeem humankind, to give us salvation. Christ brings us peace. Christ brings us hope. And Christ brings us restoration. So my Christmas message for every one of you listening to me right now in Edo State and Environ is that today's event of Christmas is an event of hope, particularly um, in our nation particularly in our families, in our homes. Do not allow hopelessness to take you away from the true path of following Christ. And then again, my Christmas message is a message of peace and love, to show love to people. Uh, if you have not done so previously, you still have time. It's a seasonal period, so you have today, you have within the week, before New Year, after New Year, to show some love to people share what you have with them 
and tell them that Christ is real and that you are ambassadors of Christ. And I pray to you, to, I pray for you today that the joy of Christmas will fill your home. I pray for you today that the happiness and peace that Christ brings will be upon your family. I pray for you today that the challenges you encounter, Christ will bring you victory. I pray for you today that the pains you have in your heart, Christ will be, give you that reassurance and take away your pain and make life easy for you because it says my yoke is easy and my burden is light and with God all things are possible so Merry Christmas to you and a prosperous new year in a few days time God bless you and I say a loud Amen to all the prayers for us Father thank you very much Reverend Father Dr. Charles Omogete, the parish priest of St. Albert's Catholic Church in Benin City, for being our guest today on this Christmas edition of Frontline. Father, thank you very much. My pleasure. And that is how it has been. You have heard the message from Father. This is a season to show love and please don't lose hope as long as we have Jesus Christ. And that's it. On behalf of the crew, I say Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year in advance. Bye-bye.